Uh, thanks, Bob, and thanks to the committee for having the opportunity to present the case for surgery and ulcerative colitis. Uh, my only disclaimer is that I've never written a 90-day prescription for narcotics. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so here's sort of the classic treatment uh, pyramid for uh, inflammatory bowel disease and ulcerative colitis uh, specifically, and surgery sits atop the pyramid, but I think that that's not because it's frequently regarded as the best treatment. In fact, it is frequently regarded as the one that has the most risk and potentially the most downside. So I think that there are a number of misconceptions about surgery that are important to understand when looking at these patients, and it speaks to the uh, collaboration between the GI docs and the surgeons that in centers like most of us come from that are uh, where it's very good uh, that, that speaks to the importance of that. Um, surgical treatment is not, uh, as is sometimes characterized, a failure. Uh, it is oftentimes better than persistent medical treatment uh, for as long as possible in an effort to stave off the knife. Uh, the operation is sometimes characterized as this horrible disfiguring nightmare that's incredibly dangerous, and I would suggest that, uh, as, as many of us know, that's actually not the case. In fact, the indications for surgery in children are obviously, or maybe not obviously, but are frequently different than the indications in children, I mean in adults. And that frequently actually makes this discussion moot because when we come to surgery or many of the patients I see for surgery, it's because they either can't tolerate the medical therapy or the medical therapy has not been successful in controlling their disease. We never, in fact, I rarely discuss the risk of cancer with the patient's families. But if we go on and say, okay, well, for patients who can be at least remotely controlled, at what point should surgery play a part in the decision-making process? And I think there are a number of things that we need to think about um, in that vein. First of all, the surgical therapy for this disease has progressed, and it's the classic three-stage operation is now done, but not nearly as often as either a two-stage, which is in my practice probably the most common, or more increasingly now a single-stage operation to avo uh, avoid a ileostomy altogether. The technique has now been very well developed and established for all size children as a laparoscopic approach, uh, where you can complete the complete uh, the uh, a colectomy as well as the proctectomy and do the J pouch reconstruction all with a laparoscopic technique. <coughs> as the picture there shows you, you can take a lot of bowel out through a very small hole. And so in fact, when the patients are finished with the operation, it actually leaves very little in the way of uh, cosmetic defect compared to previous stem to stern incisions that we use uh, in the past. And as far as the outcomes go, um, the, this is data from a, a Cochrane analysis in 2009 comparing actually laparoscopic and open pull-throughs uh, with 607 patients. Uh, about 40% of them had a laparoscopic procedure. There was only one prospective randomized controlled trial. Uh, and the ultimate answer was that there were really no significant differences. But in terms of the outcome and what I tell patients is that they can expect to have five to seven bowel movements per day uh, with good control and potentially some issues of uh, stooling at night that is usually uh, controlled with medication. So obviously the ultimate endpoint here is survival as uh, demonstrated by the last slide in the previous talk. Um, uh, this is data from a, a study that was just published, uh, as with many, it's mostly adults, uh, looked at 700 and, I'm sorry, 7,541 medically treated patients compared to 830 surgically uh, treated patients where they controlled for all the various comorbidities. And the conclusion was that an elective colectomy was associated with improved survival. Unfortunately, that's only if you're over 50 years old. So for me, that's great, but for our population, that probably doesn't really have much of an impact. In terms of quality of life, uh, this study, which was just published last year, uh, looking at health-related quality of life and disability in patients with UC, uh, treated with uh, surgery versus anti-TNF agents. Uh, they use multiple quality of life instruments in this uh, paper. There were 60 patients in remission uh, who were treated either surgically or medically. And the conclusion from that was that there was no difference in the quality of life measures. 
So if the outcomes are not bad for surgery, if you characterize four to five to seven bowel movements a day with no medications as not bad, and there's probably no difference in the ultimate outcome of mortality, the quality of life is about the same, then how do we make this uh, argument? And I think that one of the things that is becoming an increasing issue is the issue of cost. Uh, this uh, study looked at cost effectiveness of early colectomy uh, with iliopalchinacemosis versus standard medical therapy and severe ulcerative colitis. It was a Markov model simulating two co cohorts of 21-year-old patients followed for 100 years or death, whichever came first in the simulation. And the results of that study suggested that the cost, the discounted cost for a medical patient was $236,000 and the discounted cost for a, a surgical patient was $148,000. The quality of life years gained was essentially the same and the resulting incremental cost effectiveness ratio suggested a $1.5 million quality of life, adjusted life year gained in favor of surgery. In addition, there's this study that looks at where healthcare costs are spent when treating this disease, and healthcare costs have shifted from hospitalization and surgery toward the anti-TNF uh, therapy. These are results from the COIN study. There were 1,315 1, uh, Crohn's patients, but 937 ulcerative colitis patients. And anti-TNF use was the main cost driver, which accounted for 64 and 31 percent of the total cost in Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, so 31 percent of the cost in ulcerative colitis. Surgery and hospitalization, on the other hand, accounted for uh, only 1 percent of the cost in UC. So the conclusion of that study was that healthcare costs are mainly driven by medications costs, most importantly the anti-TNF uh, therapy, and that hospitalization and surgery accounted for only a minor part of the healthcare costs. And finally, um, the, if the option is, well, let's treat them as long as we can until they're in a crisis and then operate on them, I ha think we have to think about the risks of operating on a patient in an emergency situation versus as an elective procedure. Uh, this is, again, adult data from the NISQIP uh, project. Uh, it's on 5,000 patients, the vast majority of whom were operated on electively, with only 6% having an emergent operation. But the emergency cases were associated with higher frequency of cardiac, pulmonary, renal comorbidities, and post-operative complications, which resulted in a longer hospital stay and higher rates of return for, uh, to the operating room. So as my colleague has suggested that it may be better to die with your colon in, I would suggest that potentially it's better to live with your colon out. Thank you.